You know, there weren't many controversies in the old days of YouTube. Not to say it was perfect, it just wasn't how it is today. And I guess one of the few figures to cause a controversy at that time would be the mostly forgotten No Cuss Club. I was sitting in the schoolyard, hanging with my crowd, with some kids came walking by, talking really foul. Every other word was burning at my ears, so I took the new stand, and I challenged all my peers. If you wanna hang with us, I don't wanna hear cuss. If you wanna hang with us, I don't wanna hear cuss. No cuss! The No Cuss Club was a small organization made by a small town Mormon family with a very simple premise to make sure society at large were to shame the use of profanity. Not so much really hardcore words, just the very simple swear words like shit or fuck or maybe even other ones that we don't really consider swear words like ass, damn, or bitch. I was sitting in the park talking to my friends when we heard adults cussing. Man, it never ends. I said, I know I'm just a kid, but I'll challenge you too. And they said, hey, we're, we're really, really sorry. sorry. Can, Can we, we hang, hang with you? you? The face of this movement was McKay Hatch, a then junior high student who got really sick of their classmates swearing. From going into a school where it was just, you know, laced with the F words all day long, it just got to him, especially when they were his friends. First I went to my mom and I told her, you know, I don't know what to do, all my friends are cussing, what am I supposed to do? She's like, well, you can ask them or just find some new friends. So much so, he formed an entire movement to have people clean their language. And Hatch being so young also solidified the point even harder. Since you'd think with an organization like this, it would be ran by some old geriatric geezer or something. And the club slowly grew from there, having their own small internet following, where they would eventually make their own little YouTube videos, shown on their G-rated family channel. My dad was watching news, I was trying to chill When I heard about the language on Capitol Hill So I guess I write a letter to my congressman I'd like to give a challenge to my government So, technically, it's not just a YouTube channel, it's an entire movement But they have achieved enough attention on the site where people would express their own opinion on the club and it's this internet presence where the club slowly grew from there, having enough notoriety to show up on mainstream television, which is the biggest support the entire club would have. MSNBC, Fox News, you name it. He would even get celebrity endorsements like Hulk Hogan and appear on talk shows by the likes of Jay Leno and Dr. Phil. Obviously, the No Cuss Club had tons of backlash. They are the self-righteous people everyone dislikes. The overly authoritarian squares telling people what to do. So yeah, a lot of people really hate this kid and his ideals. Mostly for hatred of their attitude. Especially what they were fighting against. Fucking swear words? Seriously? Blackity blade, blibbity bleep, I don't wanna hear that speak. Boopity bloop, yakity yak, stop your cussing, clean your ass. Even more so when there's so many vulgar YouTubers that were even more popular at the time. I got shit stains in my pants and an answering message on my phone that says, Sorry, I'm playing Ghostbusters 2 on Nintendo. What a selfish game. Bottom line, have a fucking pause button. God damn it! Now, it is true that swearing every other word is annoying. But this just takes it a step too far. Moderation be damned. Is that a swear? But some people felt this was a fascist form of thinking to ruin free speech. But I don't think it was said exactly like that. Well, it was 2007 after all, but the idea was present. But there were some harassment that did go over the line, as one of their biggest critics was anonymous after all, so that's fun. However, the family seems to be in high spirits than you think. 24 hour surveillance with the police parked in front of our house when we've had some uh, bomb threats at our house, which is kind of scary. I don't know. What do you do? Just keep going forward. So you can't be fearful at all because you know that Heavenly Father is on your side and he's going to protect you. I don't care what these people think. I only care what God thinks. And I know if he was happy, then I was doing the right thing. The No Cut Club will have their own merchandise line, including the orange t-shirts you see in the video. The club's ideal state that cleaning your language gives you power of a healthy mind clear thinking, and greater self-control. So the No Cussing Club is not only about not cussing, which is important, but it's also about using positive and uplifting language towards other people and making people feel good with your words and not bullying people with your words. Fuck you! Fuck you! Fuck you! Fuck you! I said fuck you first, so fuck you! 
Okay, maybe he has a little bit of a point there. Due to the media attention, the No Cut Club appeared to have a lot of influence. They would also preach in schools to promote their cause too. My guess it was just a way to cut class, purposely ignore whatever they were saying. The main pledge was start to convince people to give up one week of swearing, and to continue from there. One week of no swearing allows you to be a no cuss club apprentice. A month allows you to become a journeyman. And one year allows you to become a no cuss club master. But what if you think up the words in your head? This feels like no fat, but a lot more dumber. One way to get people to stop swearing was using replacement words instead. Well, you know, when I stub my toe, I go, oh, pickles. I don't think that's a good alternative. However, oh, fuck, suck it! and even having their own little swear jar, with some money being used for charity, which can be pretty odd if you think about it since it makes swearing even more beneficial. Now you're playing with fucking shit. You're better off fucking shit than fucking with this fucked up shit. Fuck this shit. You don't know shit about how fucking shitty this fucking shit is. It's so bad it sucks. It's so fucking suck it fucks. Fuck you! Fuck you! Fuck you! Nah! Last time I gave a shit, I got fucked! Oh shit! It fucks up the ass, shits out the mouth, piss out the nose, dookie out the ear, diary out the dick, shits for the birds. Bitch! Oh, shit! Where's my fucking glasses? Fuck! I didn't say fire, I said fuck! Fuck! Fuck fire! Fuck! Fuck! Ah, shit! Bitch! Cunt! Fuck! Fuck! <laughs> wow, I just shot down a duck by saying fuck. Hey, there's a whole lot of fucking going on in this room! Fuck you! Well, fuck you! Fuck you! Fuck you! Fuck you and every mom's dad that looks like you! This is what true heroism looks like. When I die and go to heaven and see God, I'm gonna say, SHIT! Eventually, McKay Hatch would write a whole book about the benefits of no swearing. And the book itself had low ratings on Goodreads, with many negative reviews talking about how self-righteous it all is. Now, while McKay is a face of the organization, it's fairly obvious that the parents are in full control behind the scenes, being Brent and Fashilla Hatch. They made their own separate books and merchandise which includes a book titled Raising a G-Rated Family in an X-Rated World, which really gives off the vibe of their worldview. They also create their own little merchandise line called Hug Card, which are more wholesome merch meant to spread positivity. At first, I thought it was a self-published book that just didn't sell well, but it turns out Brent Hatch, the father, did have some small publicity as a public speaker which sort of ruins the whole story of the No Cuss Club. While the No Cuss Club may seem like a non-serious fun side activity, this aspect puts a part of their religious beliefs into it. So much sex, so much violence, so many influences from outside your family. How do you raise G-rated kids in an X-rated world? Words have a lot of power, and what you say is going to end up affecting where you're going to end up going in your life. There was also a study shown that less swearing brings in less bullying in general. I mean, I just received a two-year study from a school in Louisiana saying they had a 64% uh, decrease in uh, profanity and a 90% decrease in bullying at their school. Which is all very vague, and thinking about it, it's already in force anyways. The anti-bullying aspect became a huge part of the brand, as I'm pretty sure this kid was called many names in the book. Even those not included in Carlin's Deadly Seven Words, which... Thinking about it, wouldn't it make more sense to focus on slurs? Also, speaking of which, shouldn't slurs be more than a quarter? Like, I don't know, maybe a dollar or something? Actually, on second saw, maybe not. If you give all that money to say Black Lives Matter, it'll only encourage even more people to say the word. So, forget about it. But I'm pretty sure he's been called the R word or the F word numerous times. The other F word. I guess he was called the N word at least once. But no, the focus was on your basic swear words. And when your main nemesis would be, I don't know, the ABGN, I guess, you know you're screwed. I should also know that it's very ironic that James Rawls, despite swearing like a sailor every episode, is probably up there being the least controversial and problematic YouTuber in the site. Shitty fucking games! I hate shitty fucking games! And I hate shitty fucking Christmas, because shitty fucking Christmas means more shitty fucking games! Humbug! Bah! Fucking humbug at the head! California did propose a somewhat official no-cuss club holiday, 
Watch your mouth. That's the message some state lawmakers want to get across. Today, the state assembly passed a resolution that would establish a cuss-free week the first week in March. However, it appears that many senators seem to ignore the basic concept because obviously there's more important things to worry about. And you said that this is basically a victory for bullies. The No Cuss Club seems to have lasted a good two to three years. But since then, just feels like a paper tiger. You know how I said they appear to have a lot of power? Well, they really didn't. Like, sure, they had a lot of media attention, but none of it really did much afterwards. After a while, the site itself ended up being abandoned. In fact, I'm seeing all this through the Wayback Machine. Probably because how overly impractical the entire premise is. Well, McKay Hatch, I have no doubt that you will go far with this. You have already, and congratulations. Thank you so much. The No Cuss Club faded to obscurity. Edge your content was still being made. I also don't think the interviews of celebrities really cared that much about the concept, and probably broke it a lot in the following years. Really? You get help, you narcissistic bitch. You have no idea how much I want to slap the out of you. None of your own family will even talk to you. They know what a bitch you are and said it's a wonder I'm even talking to you. The most amusing case, of course, was Hulk Hogan's. But tonight, in the midst of a racial slur scandal, he's fighting to repair his legacy. As she revealed her husband wanted her to sleep with his best friend Hulk Hogan. I was very mad at my daughter. I was upset over a situation that happened between her and her boyfriend. And I had no idea I was being taped. I'm not a double standard type guy. I'm racist to a point. Yeah. Not only did this cuckolding video use slurs, but also broke the vows of the No Cuss Club. What the fuck, Hulk Hogan? And I think it's fair to say the No Cuss Club was even more obsolete by the 2010s. The average temperature on Earth could go up another 4 to 8 degrees. What I'm saying is the planet's on fucking fire. Safety glasses off, motherfuckers. <laughs> If he saw the Capitol Hill thing was shocking, just imagine what he'd think of Donald Trump. Proving you could add just as bad was out need to square like a sailor. But what happened to McKay Hatch? While it appears he stopped the club entirely, and is still around YouTube, promoting his own music. So, I guess he's doing alright after moving on. Brent Hatch and his wife wrote a new book, although there's not much said about them as they moved on too. Now there is something very insidious of the coverage of the No Cuss Club. Sure, many of them seem very supportive of the basic concept, as well as the talk of the harassment. All of which that felt so... fake. I think these news stages reported either as fodder or a cheap way to look good. Could you say, don't cuss? Um, what? My son's filming a video for his No Cussing Club. Don't huh? cuss. Thank you. Now, the No Cuss Club is pretty apolitical. While the core beliefs may be right-leaning, some of the biggest supporters came from Democrats. It just makes you question just how genuine these journalist outlets, and many other endorsements of the stuff, really are. It's like some sort of fucking joke. But instead, it's worthless. It's as worthless as this fucking LJN poster I have back here. However, in some messed up way, the No Cuss Club ideals did sort of spread on YouTube. Over the years, YouTube had been more brand friendly, which has left a lot of careers having to self-censorship their content. As swearing in certain parts can be part of it. If you're playing a game that's kind of violent, you're very likely to get demonetized for it. And if there's bad language in that game, especially early on in the video you make covering that game, you're likely to be demonetized for it. Even text chats are safe. But No Cuss Club had nothing to do with that per se, as it was a bunch of other unfortunate factors. But rather if you won at the end, I'll leave the answer up to you. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want, you can see some of my other content. Hope to see you soon.